Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in to the first ever Campus Stores How-To session. My name is Dylan and today we'll be going through advanced save searches. Now we all know save searches are an integral part of NetSuite and a very powerful tool. And today I'm going to show you exactly why that is in a little bit more detail. We'll be taking a look at a save search called Transaction Sales by Channel. And this is a save search specific to Campus Stores where we've sectioned out the channel that each sale has come from, along with a bunch of other interesting information, uh, mainly the sales. So we're going to take a quick look at the results first. And as we move through here, you're going to notice a couple different things. As I pointed out, we have the channel here. So we have POS and SCA. And if we scroll farther down here, uh, we'll be able to see an ERP transaction in here as well. So we've hit our three main channels. But you can also see information such as the customer, the item, quantities, amount, tax, and of course the totals. Along with that, you'll notice some other interesting things such as some highlighting on both the line and the text itself. And those have different meanings to them. If I scroll back down here to the bottom, we can see a little legend here. So in blue, we have book sales. In orange, we have shipping income. And highlighted, there are our digital sales. So we split it up like that, so it's a little bit easier to interpret what exactly is going on in front of us. Along with that, you can also see that all of these links are clickable. So we are able to then go directly into the transaction itself. Now that's just on the surface. We also have these filters sitting here which can help us even further. So I've added a, a bunch of filters here that may be useful. Uh, if you're looking for specifically rental information, we can look at the term rented and we can narrow down by specifically terms that we've entered through and it will filter this information. Or if it was only used rentals, if we only have new book sales, so on and so forth. So adding these filters can be also extremely handy. So then how do we create something like this? Obviously this is a very powerful tool and it's giving you a lot of very useful information. So I'll walk you exactly, I'll walk through exactly how we made this. So here we see our save transaction search kind of main page where we can specify the title, the ID, and a couple settings. So I'll start off at the top with the settings. And public is a fairly important one, where if you click this off, everybody that you give access to within your audience and roles here will have access to it. If you don't click this off, then this is a search associated with specifically just you and others won't be able to see it. So if you're trying to share a safe search with somebody and they can't find it anywhere, go check that the public checkbox is checked off. Other things up top, is if you are using it for a dashboard view where you want it to be available on a list. Those things are all right here. So for my own convenience, I've currently checked all of these off just to make sure this is accessible as possible to everybody else, but that may not always be the case. But to get into how to create the actual safe search, we've got to start first with the criteria. And this is one of the most important aspects of the safe search. Uh, this is a transactional search but I can't just return every transaction that I've ever had in this account. So we've got to narrow it down a little bit. I start off with type, and since we're looking for sales data, I narrow this down to invoice and cash sale. I wanted to show just the sales between a certain date range. So I have date created here and within this time frame, And then I have a couple different conditions here to kind of narrow down the information that I'm looking for off of these transactions. So I'm not looking for bursar charges, and I'm not looking for specifically tax lines or COGS lines, and I'm not looking for mainline. And mainline is a NetSuite jargon that essentially means uh, at the high level transaction, not the line level. So you can think of mainline as not line level. So that is false. So therefore, we're looking at line level information. 
I also don't want to include any transactions where we have no quantities to speak of. And then I also didn't want to take a look at store pickup or free digital shipping items, just as another qualifier that we could throw in there. And through all of that, I've narrowed down the criteria that I feel represents what we're looking for here for transactional sales. There's also this really handy button right here called Use Expressions. And if I click on this, this actually gives me the ability to add operators and parentheses, potentially even formulas, to my criteria. So say I wanted it to have uh, a not or or, I could check that off here. Very powerful and you can get into much more complicated expressions. We don't need that for what we're currently looking at, but it's something to keep in mind is that you can add these parentheses so that your criteria actually has an order of operations to it along with operators. Very powerful. So now that I've defined my criteria, the next important thing that I want to actually define is the results. Kind of jump me down there. Uh, at the top of the results, you'll see we have a sort by and a couple options. So the sort by will give you just a default order of how the information will be displayed. And I've chosen to display it by date, but there are many options that you can choose from here. And you can have that ascending or descending. And there's a couple other options over here that are very interesting about running the results and how you prefer to see the results. Uh, but we're going to leave that as is, and most of the time you will as well. For the actual results themselves, there are two options. There's the columns and the drill down fields. And I'll get to the drill down fields in a minute. We're going to focus mainly on the columns right now. So the columns that I want to see in the results, once we've found all the transactions in the criteria that I've specified, the things that interest me are the document number, this formula field, which is actually our, you can see from the custom label here, this is our channel. And we've created this formula to grab all the information from these transactions from various different fields and kind of aggregate them into this channel list. Because Campus Stores currently right now does not have a single source field for which channel it comes from. It's something we're implementing, but it's not quite here yet. So to get around that, we've chosen to use this formula. And case is a very powerful formula that you can spend a lot of time messing around with, but this is our resulting formula to grab that information and split it up between SCA, uh, POS, or ERP. So the result is one of those three from this formula. And that's mainly what we're interested in here is splitting this up by a channel. But it's no good if we only have the channel. So I also wanted to see the date the name of the customer here, what they bought, if it was rented, what the quantity was, and then the amounts. You can see quantity here was put into absolute value. So there's also neat functions that you can throw in here. And then formula for the currencies was also added where we just applied uh, a formatting to the tax amount, in this case, a decimal formatting and then added that formatting as well as just manually adding these totals together to get our amount total. So not only have we covered formulas and functions, but there are also interesting things like summaries. So say I just wanted to see total across everything instead of the individual lines, how much I've sold by channel. So what I would do here instead is I'd click summary type and I'm going to group by our three channel options here. And then down here for our amount total, I'm going to sum those up. And just from these two options, if I come up here and press preview again, let that run, we can see I have my three channels here, ERP, POS, and SCA. And then the total sum of those transactions broken down right here at a high level. All just by grouping these together and summing these up. 
very powerful function and very easy to do as long as you're grabbing the right information. So let's return back to the criteria and keep looking around. So we're back in the results tab and I'm going to take out our summary type that we just added so we can get back to the base save search. And you can see we have our custom labels here. So if the field that you're looking at doesn't quite line up with how you want it represented in your save search, you can always add a custom label. There are many, many options that you can choose from when choosing what your results will look like. And one that I want to point out is down at the bottom of this list, if I scroll all the way down here, you start seeing fields with dots after them, the ellipses. And what this means is it's not grabbing the customer field itself. This you can think of rather as a join, uh, where this customer field, it will take the customer record instead that is attached to the transaction and then look up a field in that customer's uh, record. So this is, this is a join field, and it's very useful to pull a lot of good information that is associated not necessarily the transaction itself, but things that are associated with that transaction. So these joins are very powerful, and I urge you to keep those in mind. Coming back to the drill down fields, you saw me use a summary type before, and if I had grouped by summary and clicked on that group, there would have been a drill down, and that drill down would have brought us to the same type of results field these results columns as before but it would have been a little different because it would have used the drill down fields instead and i haven't modified these this is just the the basic information that shows up it tends to add custom fields that you've added when you click on the drill down information it brings you to almost an identical looking page with a different set of results and you can customize these in exactly the same way, but it might be beneficial to have a summary result on your first column and then drill down fields where you want more specific information from those groups themselves. So keep that in mind where you can drill down into those fields and set different results depending on what you're looking for. We also saw earlier that we had some highlighting. And you can see here we had those three highlighting rules where here's our condition, and these are all run through conditions. So there's this small little pop up that we use. And you can use expressions here as well, where we've described our conditions, applied our operators, and set them. And then once that's set, we can apply either an image, a text color, a background color or bold the text themselves when it fits that condition. So this can be a true or not true statement among various other things that you can do. And we've kept it pretty simple in that we've only changed the base text color for two of them and highlighted the line for a different one. There hasn't been any bold ones. Just like in the results, you can then change the description or uh, the header. This is in a sense, the legend that will appear at the bottom that tells you exactly what these colors are for. Very simple to use, and it helps classify all the information that you've processed so far much more easily at a glance. There's also a summary here, which is exactly the same, except it would have been used for those groupings that I had talked about here. So at a summary level, you can apply different highlighting information from the drill down level or just a normal results. So lots of flexibility in that regard, which is also great. The next sub tab that we're looking at is filters. And you saw that I had all those filters up at the top uh, and I've, I've customized those and you can see them I've checked off yes to show in filter region. So you can add filters that don't necessarily show up as selectable at the top, but are, are usable otherwise. Uh, and there's also a multi-select option 
where you may want to choose more than one filter at the same time within the same filter. Uh, so say I want to well, uh, use used books and new books at the same time, which in, in this case is all of them, but I could select both of them. Or uh, the product category, I could choose two of our product categories and leave out a different one. In that sense, multi-select can be very useful. Again, we've used our custom labels here so that the filters are much more clearly labeled than, say, if there's just academic term custom column written there over the filter. You could figure it out, but it's not quite as intuitive as this is the term that we rented this in. And just like all of the other things that we've looked at before, the criteria, the results, and highlighting, there are a ton of options here that you can look through and find all the filters that should suit your needs. Uh, you can also use the joins in this one as well. So throwing that all together, those, that really encompasses the information that you'll see in the results page once we actually run this search. But there are a couple more options when it comes to save searches. And that comes over on these few tabs. Audience and roles is our next couple tabs. And audience is, you can think of as the people that are allowed to see this search. Uh, there's even an allow audience to edit uh, if you're brave enough or have a, a search where you want people who are viewing it to be able to play with it. Similarly with roles, and you can see they have this little box that tells you the difference between audience and roles. You can apply this to certain roles so that they can use it, say, on their dashboard or in sublists. Uh, so you can make this, instead of audience specific, role specific. Then we get to the email subtab. And the email subtab is really interesting because it's like creating an alert for yourself. Uh, there are these options where you can send email alerts when the save search is updated with new records. You can send emails according to schedule. Uh, and if you click that off, then you can have summarized and send if no results options on top. Choose specific recipients for that. Get recipients from results on fields on those transactions. So send it to specific relevant people. You can send it if a particular field is updated instead. So say you want this email update to depend on one field if that changes. And then you can also send customized messages as well. Uh, here you can see the HTML code, so there's a lot of flexibility. You can also set a schedule for how often you would like these to be sent. And this works exactly like a, a scheduled script would, where we'd send according to schedule and we set the schedule here. So you can have a daily event or a weekly event where it sends the results of these save searches that you could use as reports for yourselves. In this case, sales, transaction sales by channel. You want to see that once a month, then you could have that automatically sent to you with all the results that you need to see about it. And of course, the normal NetSuite audit trail and execution log are here. So you can always keep track of who changed what, where, if something goes wrong, it's very easy to see. And that pretty much encompasses everything that you'll need to know to create the best safe search that you can think of very useful in so many different situations. And all you need to do is go in here to lists, search, save searches, and see the massive list of available save searches and different types of save searches that you can play with. And then look through all these subtabs. Through that, you'll be able to find just about any information in NetSuite that you can possibly think of. So thanks so much again for tuning in. This was Campus Store's how-to session, and I hope you'll join us for the next one. Thanks so much.